All right, so they got frags, smokes, and impacts. This looks like pepper spray. Hey, you. You're finally awake. When I first heard about Vale, I thought it was going to be some Counter-Strike clone for Crypto Bros. Crypto Strike Global Brofensive, if you will. The NFT angle turned me off to the game almost completely, so I decided I just wasn't going to buy it. That, and sometimes we got a ball on a budget. But my curiosity about the game didn't fade. And digging a little deeper, I found that while the NFT valiance thing was real, it isn't even kind of a core part of the game. In fact, you probably wouldn't even know it was a thing unless you heard about it somewhere else. In reality, it was just a creative push for development funding. At least that's what I've read. So, I picked up a copy when it was half off. From what I can tell, Vale is being developed to be THE VR esports game. Like what CSGO was for so long, but in the world of virtual reality. Which is awesome. I love competitive games. I have several hundreds of hours in games like Rocket League, CSGO, and Valorant to back that up. Really, I'm competitive in pretty much everything. Even some things that I have no chance at actually being good at. Like video games, for example. But my stupid monkey brain is hardwired to try to get sort of good at stuff. So it was a simple decision for me to give Vale an honest try, even knowing that I would likely devolve into the sweaty, competitive ape that I am deep down. When I finally launched the game, I had a problem. Oh, that's not good. There just weren't many players around to compete against. At least not while I did most of my recording. Oh, that's not good. It seems like the player count spikes at certain times of the day. But even then, there's usually only a few full servers, at least based on my experience. I'm sure more players will show up closer to the full launch of the game, but for right now in early 2023, I was getting a totally different experience because of these lower populations. While I did find a couple of actually competitive games on a later day, I met and played with about 10 people in my first three-hour session. I has, like, good uh, skins, I think. I mean, skins. That's in the box I don't even know how to put them. That's in the box. He's the homie. Good dude, good dude. Doesn't say much. It smells nice though. Okay, now it gets a little bit sus. We screwed around, explored maps, joked with one another, and generally just had a great time playing a very casual version of a game that I thought was going to be Sweat City. And while we were doing that, I learned a few things that I'll share with you. One, that you can manually operate the selector switch on the guns. Yes, this is a stupid, tiny detail. But out of all the little features, this switch sparks a disproportionate amount of joy. And I want the world to know that this is ultimate realism. Two, that Vale actually has a backstory and that our new friend Eric knew all about it. Would you like to know the lore of this game? <laughs> I would, actually. Okay, good. <laughs> because I was going to explain it anyway. Go forth, lore master Eric. Educate me. His focus was a little split. Because they believe we should, if, if we're trying to spread culture, they should. So, I'll just tell you what he told me, paraphrased with info from the Vale website. <clears throat> In the near future, on a blighted earth, the claim to the human legacy is diverging. Okay, I'm not going to do that for the whole thing. The white team, known as colonists, have moved to space and are trying to take cultural artifacts and heritage sites with them. The black team, known as Rehab, are fighting to keep those human cultural artifacts on Earth, believing that they should stay on the planet. The colonists are sent back to Earth to digitize these artifacts with scanners, while Rehab tries to defend them. Which is cool, because this could be a game about literally nothing, and I would be happy. But the fact that there's real lore makes it that much better. Third, I learned that people in this game are generally super nice. Motherfucker. I'm sorry. It's not personal. <laughs> you sometimes forget that you got a microphone on. Yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Die, Eric. You're a bitch. I am, even if it's only for now. I had only positive interactions with the people that I did meet, which basically never happens in a competitive game. If you've played Counter-Strike or League, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So really, you're just a for like... Sorry. And I even went back in and saw some of the same people I had played with on other days. 
which is kind of like randomly seeing a buddy online in a lobby. It's just kind of cool. And the last thing I learned is that while this game is mostly shades of white, black, and grayish brown, there are some pretty colorful areas. And while the flat overall tone of the game can seem kind of bland, it really makes the colors you do see pop. What is this? I can't say that I love the overall aesthetic, but it's not that dissimilar to other competitive games. And most importantly, it offers a backdrop that doesn't distract from the main goal. Like I said towards the beginning of the video, Veil's final form is supposed to be an eSport. This means top-level competitive play, big cash prize pools, and a game that people will actually want to watch. And all of the building blocks appear to be in place. The gunplay is rock solid, especially so if you have a VR gun stock. And the customization options are pretty good with a number of optics being available for each of the primary weapons. Personally, I like more customization than just optics in first-person shooters, but changing the optic won't alter the balance of the game like other attachments like forends or muzzle devices would. And maintaining that balance is key to keeping a level playing field where the deciding factor of who wins and loses comes down to strategy and raw skill. Rounding it out with great map design, a free-flying camera spectator mode, good sight lines and open paths for utility, and grenades that feel great to throw. Trust me, I spend far too much time just throwing grenades. I could easily see this being developed into an excellent esports level competitive game. So while I was initially skeptical and perhaps even biased against what Vale was, and even though my experience wasn't actually what I expected it to be, I loved it especially after putting in some time to get a taste of both the true competitive version. I'm gonna watch the, uh... Okay, cool. you got that one? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll hang down here. And the silly casual version. Oh, they got another guy. A bunch of nines. Oh, when your keyboard's stucky. <laughs> that never happens to me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> With the addition of Steam Workshop content, Vale could have some real potential. I read a comment the other day that said, in order for a competitive esports game to survive and flourish, it has to be fun when played casually. Judging from my experience, Vale has this covered. But what do I know? I'm just an ape with a pair of screens strapped to my face, swinging an imaginary AK around. If you think I'm wrong about any of this, tell me about it in the comments. Or, you can challenge me to a 1v1 in Veil to defend your honor. And honestly, you'll probably succeed. But anyway, I hope you have a good one. And thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this. Hopefully you got a kick out of it. If you did, I'll make more of these. If you didn't, well, I'm going to make more anyway because it's fun. Okay, bye. Oh. <laughs> I'll, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll, we'll cut that from the video. Don't worry about it. Okay.